My name is Dr. Sarah Myhill. I'm speaking for Life, the Basic Manual. And this is all about empowering people to heal themselves uh, through their own efforts. My special interest is chronic fatigue syndrome, and that is a balance between energy delivery mechanisms and energy expenditure. And I'm now going to talk about how the body spends energy and in particular in fatigue syndromes, how it wastes energy and this results in symptoms. There are about two thirds of all the energy generated in the body just goes on basal metabolism, staying alive, keeping the brain alive, the heart alive, the liver alive, the gut alive and so on. Which means we have about a third of all our energy to spend on having a life and we can spend that energy mentally and we can spend it physically and we can spend it emotionally. And of course, you know, I need to spend energy in my work and I spend a lot of energy mentally, but people doing a physical job will spend it phys physically as indeed will the athletes. In chronic fatigue syndrome, um, the most important and common hole in that energy bucket, as I think of it, is the immunological hole. Now the immune system is our standing army. Um, the immune system is responsible for protecting us from um, infections. And the immune system has a very important job to do. Without the immune system, we would all succumb very quickly. But the immune system can make mistakes. And, um, um, and we call those mistakes allergy, because that is an inappropriate reaction against a food to which we are allergic. Um, and the immune system can make mistakes, and we call that autoimmunity, when the immune system attacks itself. And both those conditions, allergy and autoimmunity, I think of a civil war. And if, you have, if you're a country and you have a standing army and it's fighting itself, then that's enormously um, damaging to the country and um, it's more enormously draining to the country in terms of energy and raw materials. And exactly the same thing is true in the body. When we've got allergy and we've got autoimmunity, um, it's draining of energy because the immune system uses up an enormous amount of energy. How do I know that? When you get flu, uh, you're absolutely wiped out. You have no energy at all. And the second problem is that when the immune system is activated, it causes inflammation. Now, if that's inflammation against infection, that has great potential to do good and is an essential part of survival. But if that is a useless inflammation, then that can cause any symptom that you care to mention. So inflammation in the gut will present with irritable bowel syndrome and uh, inflammatory bowel disease. Inflammation in the brain will present with headache, migraine. Inflammation in the lungs will present with asthma and uh, respiratory disease. Inflammation um, um, in the joints will present with arthritis, muscle stiffness and joint pain. So inflammation is a very damaging thing. And um, uh, yes, doctors have lots of drugs to treat inflammation, but it doesn't get at the root cause of that. It simply damps it down and, um, uh, and the underlying pro, uh, pathology progresses regardless. So when I first started getting interested in chronic fatigue syndrome, the major inflammatory process I was looking at was allergy. And that's why so many people did well when I simply put them on elimination diets, cut out the grains, cut out the dairy products, and many people saw improvements and reductions in symptoms. But increasingly, I'm finding that um, we have um, an infectious hole in the energy bucket, chronic inflammation against low-grade chronic infection. Now we have to ask ourselves why we're seeing epidemics of chronic infection. And the reason for that is um, uh, uh, twofold, but the main one is that our modern Western lifestyles mean we have, our immune system is being uh, run down, it's being degraded, it's not functioning as efficiently as it should. Um, a major cause of that has to do with diet, um, people are eating high carbohydrate diets, which is conducive to infection. All these microbes, whether it's uh, bacteria, yeasts, parasites, they love to ferment sugars and carbohydrates. So by eating a high carbohydrate diet, that's if you like, is inviting infection into the body. One example of this is diabetics who um, uh, have uh, lose control of their blood sugar. Um, they often present with some sort of chronic infection. It might be urinary tract infection, it might be recurrent skin infections or whatever, but it illustrates the point that high carbohydrate diets are conducive to infection. On top of that, modern Western diets are deficient. They don't have the micronutrient um, content that they should. Why? 
because there's a one-way movement of minerals from the soil into plants, into animals, into us, and we throw it away. We're not recycling back onto the fields. And the mineral content of agricultural soils these days is about a tenth of what it was 100 years ago. So as I say to my patients, you could be eating the most perfect organic, biodynamic diet, but you'd still be deficient. In fact, in the 1990s, I had a big conversation with the Soil Association saying to them, yes, it's great that you're growing things organically, but you've also got to replenish the minerals in the soil to get truly good quality food. Unfortunately, they didn't run with that. So what that means is that um, the starting point for treating absolutely anything, including fatigue, is you have to take a basic package of nutritional su supplements, minerals, vitamins, essential fatty acids, all essential for the immune system. Without these raw materials, the immune system can't function. It's like sending an army out without ammunition and without guns. You know, you're just sending them out with knives and forks. You know, that's not, gonna, not going to do. I'm also aware, and I don't know if this is a particularly uh, British thing, but people hate taking supplements. So I have tried to put together some supplements or packages of supplements which are very easy for people to use and which they can include in their everyday um, diet. And one that I'm using a lot these days is what I call sunshine salt. And uh, the idea of this is that it contains all the minerals that you need for healthy life, all the um, calcium, magnesium, zinc, copper, selenium, molybdenum, um, um, and so on and so forth. I also put in that salt a big dose of vitamin D because everybody's deficient. I have never done blood tests on a patient who isn't taking vitamin D and found a normal level. Deficiency is pandemic. And uh, vitamin D is a very important modulator of inflammation in the body. If you're vitamin D, D deficient, you will be much more likely to develop allergies and autoimmune conditions. And I also put in a big dose of vitamin B12. Again, the same, you know, whenever I measure levels of B12, not taking supplements, they're often deficient. So that one um, preparation covers many bases. And okay, vital for the immune system. But so, um, uh, now, uh, um, so we have um, a tendency to chronic infection because say, our immune system is being eroded. Another major problem is vaccination. And I now have so many patients who have developed fatigue syndromes following vaccination. And um, I, in fact, I routinely advise my patients with fatigue to avoid vaccination. Now, vaccination has potential to do good, but it also has potential to, to do great harm. Why? Firstly, um, um, when you inject somebody with a vaccine, whether that be a viral vaccine or a bacterial vaccine, you bypass the normal lines of defense for infection. It doesn't go into the gut, it doesn't go into the skin, it goes straight through the skin into the muscle, and there it can directly access the brain and internal organs. It's like a computer hacker having a direct line into the CIA. Um, you know, he, he doesn't go through his usual defences, he's you know, uh, uh, essentially changing the whole intelligence of the immune system you know, at, at root, root cause. So that is a problem. And the second reason with vaccinations is the body isn't stupid. If you inject some dead virus or some dead bacteria into it, it'll just say, oh, do you know what? That's dead virus, that's dead bacteria. We can ignore it. Vaccinations only work if you put an adjuvant in there. And those adjuvants are designed to switch on the immune system. Now, they're supposed to switch on the immune system against whatever is in the vaccine, but there's also potential to switch on the immune system against other things. And there's some lovely work done by Dr. Yehuda Schoenfeld, who is um, a world class consultant immunologist clearly demonstrating that our epidemics of autoimmunity that we're seeing and now one in 20 of the population um, have an autoimmune condition um, uh, part of the cause is vaccination and the third problem with vaccines is the adjuvants they use are directly toxic um, they're using mercury and aluminium so that's just immune system aside that's a straight poisoning and in fact lynn redwood who's son uh, developed autism calculated that he received 170 times um, the recommended daily allowance for mercury um, for an adult and this is in, in, in a child or in, in, in a baby so just the amount of heavy metal that's in there is is is, is damaging okay it's been now recognized that mercury is a problem it's been replaced by aluminium it's just as toxic we know aluminium causes alzheimer's disease for example so um, vaccinations are dysregulating the immune system um, and that is affecting the immune uh, response and then the third point is 
I think has to do with climate change. And um, the, the world is warming. Um, insects are um, um, uh, invading um, uh, areas of the world that they were never were not there previously or in the same amounts. And insect bites is a major cause of transmissible disease. We're seeing epidemics of Lyme disease. Um, that's one that is now just coming to the fore as, as, as a cause of fatigue. But there are other microbes which have been with us for um, millions of years and the body has learned to deal with. But um, um, uh, as our immune systems go down, as they uh, get into the insect population, um, we're now seeing epidemics of humans in humans. So Babesia, Bartonella, um, maybe mycoplasmas. Um, there's very good evidence to show that all these conditions are uh, spread by insect bites, which might be ticks, it might be uh, insects, it might be uh, fleas, you know, whatever, um, and have the potential to cause low grade, you know, chronic um, inflammation. Now, of course, if you look at life from the point of view of an infection, it doesn't want to kill that person because that kills them in the process. So what you want to do is, is if, you, if, you're, if you're an infected bug like Bartonella, you want to make that um, person a nice home for you to, to breed in, but not kill it. But of course, um, that never quite happens that way. You end up with a patient who's less than 100% well. So chronic infections is um, a very major part of um, um, uh, chronic fatigue syndrome. In fact, um, the way I think of this is chronic fatigue syndrome is what we have when energy delivery mechanisms are down and we treat that by looking at the diet, mitochondria, um, uh, thyroid function, adrenal function, and so on. But if you have the chronic fatigue plus the inflammation, I call that myalgic encephalitis, the itis bit being inflammation of the muscles, of the brain, but of course actually any part of the body. And so often that is infection driven.